Welcome back. It's time for chapter 13, the PLOS circuit analysis. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've printed out these notes here that are posted, and you might want to print them out and follow along. Okay, so why? Well, algebra is easier than calculus. That's about the main reason. So we want to be able to get rid of integral differential time domain equations, right, integrals and derivatives, and just use S domain polynomials directly, because that can be easier than using calculus. And the second reason is we want to be able to model transient response. So the book spends a lot of time talking about the impulse function, delta of t, and the step function, u of t. And those are good. We'll deal with those a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, mostly I want to talk about some other things. Um, but another way to think about this Laplace is that it's a more general case of, of phasers. Like if you remember from chapter 9 phasers, the uh, frequency was constant, right? And we only dealt with uh, the steady state, right? We, so we were modeling steady state sinusoidal signals with no transient response. So in that case, the frequency is constant. You'll have some input function that's a constant, and all the other signals in the circuit will be sinusoids. They'll only differ in a magnitude and a phase angle, right? That's chapter nine stuff. But here, frequency is a parameter. Frequency can change. Also, we can model the transient response. So what is that? Well, think about your house. You know, there's sinusoidal power signals, but you're flipping things on and off in your house. You're turning on your microwave and your, and your hot tub clicks in and out, your air conditioner click in and out. So those are sinusoidal input signals, but they're switched on and off. And so that initial switch will, will form a transient response. So Laplace lets us model these kinds of transient responses a little bit better. So you can think of it as a, a general case, a more general case of, of phasers where omega is a variable. The frequency omega is a variable, and the uh, we can model switches opening and closing a little bit better. All right. Um, so the, here, here's um, circuit elements in the S domain. So we have Ohm's law v equals I z. We have our three passive elements: resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Here's a voltage and a current, and uh, resistance. So resistance is just resistance. It doesn't change. So the, you just use V equals IR, Ohm's law. For inductor, you'd use V equals IZ, and the impedance is given by SL. Okay, so SL has units ohms for an inductor, and for a capacitor, uh, it also has units ohms, but it's given by 1 over SC. So we're skipping a lot of math on why this is the case, but uh, we're just going to use them. All right, another uh, a very important function or concept that, that is introduced at this point is the concept of the transfer function. Now we're going to see the transfer function in future chapters when we talk about Fourier analysis and frequency uh, filters. Uh, mm, it's a, and if you go on in circuits, you'll, you'll deal with the transfer function uh, and higher level uh, you know, upper division classes and stuff. It's a very important concept. So the transfer function is just defined as the ratio of the output over the input in, for the Laplace domain. So it's given by uh, H of S is the symbol we use and it's defined as some signal Y of S over another signal X of S. The output Y of S over the input X of S. Okay, where Y and X are just some chosen signals. They could both be voltages, they could both be currents, could be a current and a voltage, or a voltage and a current, and they can be anywhere in the circuit. So those are chosen, all right? So the general form is we use X and Y, but these will really be V or signals or I signals or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to derive these transfer functions and play with them. Like One of the things we're going to play with is we're going to do a partial fraction ex expansion of, of H of S. Um, particular problem we're going to work, we're going to expand H, H of S, X of S, which is, which is Y, right? And we're going to look at the poles. 
okay? And the poles are the values that make the denominators zero, right? The roots of the of the uh, terms on the on the denominator. And and you can look at those poles and get an idea of these two responses, the steady state response and the transient response. So that's an important concept and we can introduce it here in the transfer function and we'll see it again later. So um, briefly stated, the poles of, uh, in this term here, h of s, x of s, the poles of h of s, that is the denominator uh, values that make the denominator zero, will those will characterize the transient response, right? And the, the um, the poles of, of x of, of s, the input function, those will characterize the steady state response. Um, this, let's see, should I say, um, this does relate back to chapter 9. And remember in chapter 9 we were just talking about steady state. We sort of ignored the transient response, right? We just figured that you know, there's no switches. Um, and in that case, the steady state response is characterized just by the input, right? In X of S. Remember back, remember back to chapter 9, you have uh, some input signal, some voltage signal that's a sinusoid, and then from that we know that all the other signals are going to be uh, sinusoidal signals, they'll, they'll only differ by their magnitude and phase. That's chapter 9, right? Well, that shows up here in, uh, in this, but in this X of S thing, but H of S models the the transient spot response that is how the circuit responds when a switch is is open or closed okay so this it's a more general uh, you know case of of, of frequency than, than phasers are so we'll see that in in a couple of problems and even in the rest of these little notes right here all right here's a simple example just to get into this transfer function thing so let's say you have some little circuit here just the simplest just about the simplest one you could make here for to understand this concept. So we've got a time domain uh, circuit here, little v's of, of t. v sub i is the input voltage and or the input signal, which happens to be a voltage. And v0 of t is the output signal, which happens to be a voltage. And um, the transfer function, h of s, would be the, the time, or the, uh, sorry, the uh, frequency domain equivalence of these two time domain signals. So it would be the... Uh, you know, V0 of S over VI of S for this particular example, right? For just for this example, because keep in mind, the transfer function is it's just some some chosen output signal over some chosen input signal. Here we've chosen these two voltages to be the, our input and output, but they could be other signals, currents, other voltages, things like that. So that's the idea of a transfer function, all right? Um, we're going to play with that. We're going to derive some transfer functions. We're going to factor them and look at the roots, and we'll even get the uh, time domain signal out of those out of those transfer functions. And uh, the kind of the point of all this is just well, one of the points of all of this is just to start working with this stuff so that as we move on in in the material, it's uh, we don't get lost. So, all right, page two of the notes. Um, after, so we'll talk about the transfer function, and then I want to kind of do one problem on sinusoidal steady state response using the transfer function. Okay, so we can do that. So given, given a transfer function, h of s, okay, you can use that to get the steady state response. So assume you have an input function. This could this could be a voltage or a current. So generally speaking we use x of t to model some voltage or current signal. So assume you have some input function. This will be this will be switched. Otherwise it would just be steady state. There would be no transient response, right? So the, there's a U of T in here implied. So you go home and you know you turn on the air conditioner and this sinusoidal signal gets switched into the circuit. So um, yeah, there's just, there it doesn't say that, but there's a U of T implied in here. Anyway, so say your your input function is is this. 
then it turns out, and we're skipping a whole bunch of math derivations, but it turns out that if you solve the transfer function h of s at j omega, just plug in j omega into whatever the transfer function turns out to be, big sug, some big uh, ugly partial fraction is what it's going to be. But you plug that in and solve it at j omega, you get, you'll get a constant. You'll get this here. Well, this is just a phasor. It's just a magnitude, the, the vertical bars are, are a magnitude signal, and then a phase angle. They just, in this chapter, they like to use this notation for a phasor. So it's uh, uh, magnitude of, of h at j omega times e to the j theta of omega. And theta, of a, theta, theta at omega, this little guy right here, is a phase shift. Okay, so given a sinusoidal input signal that's switched in to the, to the circuit, and, and assume you already have the transfer function, if you solve that transfer function at j omega, then you can find what the steady state time response will be after the, that is after the, uh, t the transients have died down. And it's just given by uh, A, the magnitude of the original simple signal, signal, multiplied times the magnitude of the transfer function, okay, times cosine omega t, the original omega t, plus the, uh, phi, the original phase shift angle, if there is one, and then this additional phase shift, shift angle, theta of omega in here. So kind of what we're saying is, it could, it could look like this, just as an example. Like, you could have a sinusoidal signal that's switched into the circuit, and the response may have a transient component to it, but eventually it's going to settle down to a sinusoid. Remember, in Chapter 9, we just dealt with the sinusoidal steady state. We ignored the transient here. But here we're going to model the transient a, li a little bit. So, um, yeah, so you switch, in this, you switch in this sinusoid, you get some wiggling around, and then eventually it settles down to a sinusoid. So I drew sort of a dotted line here, just an arbitrary uh, point at which the circuit's stable enough for, uh, you know, good enough to work or whatever. And so to the right here is, is a steady state, and to the left is a transient. And um, the steady state signal is given by the poles of the input function. I mean, this is going to be a Laplace, um, a Laplace uh, partial fraction algebraic expression. So you look at the poles, the, the values at the denominator that make the, term, the uh, partial fraction terms zero, the poles, and uh, those will give you a, an idea of what the steady state will, will look like. And then you look at the poles of the transfer function, and that'll give you an idea of what the the wiggly, the more wigglish, you know, the transient part of the of the signal will look like. All right. So this is a little bit heady, and uh, uh, takes a lot of faith because we're skipping a lot of uh, math to come up with these things. But hopefully, we'll work we'll work some problems, and that'll uh, these these concepts will seem clearer to you. All right. So I'm going to go work some problems now. I'll see you in a bit.